Hello, my name's Gabe. For this problem, we're asked to sketch the graph of the function f of x equals 2x squared plus 1 divided by x by stating the domain of the function, finding any intercepts, finding any asymptotes, and then we're going to create a table where we find a couple more points on the graph, and finally, we're going to use all of this information to sketch the graph of f. So let's begin by discussing the domain of f. So since we're working with a, a rational function, we know that the domain is all of the values except where the denominator is equal to zero. Well, looking at this function, since our denominator is just x, our domain is going to be all real numbers except for when x equals zero. part b of this problem, we're asked to find any of the intercepts. So let's begin by talking about the y-intercept. So remember, the y-intercept comes from when x equals 0. Well, from right here, when we talked about the domain, we said the domain was all real numbers except for x equaling 0. So what this tells us about the y-intercept is that we don't have a y-intercept because we can't have x equals 0. Next, we'll talk about the x-intercept. So if we're looking for the x-intercept, remember, this is when we want to set our function equal to 0 and solve. So the equation we want to solve is 0 equals 2x squared plus 1 divided by x. Now, we know that this is only going to be true when the numerator is equal to 0. So we'll set 2x squared plus 1 equal to 0. And something that you might see here, you might not see it until we go a couple steps further, is that this is actually never going to equal 0 because we have 2 times x squared, which is always going to be a positive number, plus 1. So we're never going to be able to get 0, but we can take this a step or two further and see what we end up with. So let's subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. So we have 2x squared is equal to negative 1. And here, we can divide each side of this equation by 2, which leaves us with x squared equals negative 1 half. So now, if we were to try to solve this equation, we wouldn't get real solutions. So since we don't have a real solution to this equation, what we'll say is that our function has no in x-intercepts. So what this tells us is that our graph of f never crosses the y-axis and never crosses the x-axis. Next, let's talk about asymptotes. So there's three types of asymptotes that we can have. We can have horizontal asymptotes, we can have vertical asymptotes, and we can have slant asymptotes. So looking at f, if we want to find horizontal asymptotes, well, we'll note that the degree of the numerator is 2, and the, the degree of the denominator is 1. So using what we know about horizontal asymptotes, we can say that f has no horizontal asymptotes. Next, we'll talk about the vertical asymptotes. So the vertical asymptotes happen whenever we're dividing by zero and when the numerator and denominator don't have any common factors. So looking at our function, we'll see that the numerator and the denominator don't share any common factors. So we're going to have a vertical asymptote when the denominator equals zero. So our vertical asymptote is an equation, an equation of a line, and it's x equals zero because that, that's what makes our denominator equal to zero. The next thing we want to talk about is slant asymptotes. So here, looking at our function, we see the degree of the numerator is 2, and the degree of the denominator 
is 1. So since the degree of the numerator is exactly 1 more than, than the degree of the denominator, we are going to have a slant asymptote. So if this was anything other than just x or a multiple of x, we'd have to go through some sort of maybe long division or synthetic division in order to rewrite this to find the slant asymptotes. But what we can do here is we can actually rewrite f by breaking up the fraction, so breaking up the numerator, and we could write f as 2x squared divided by x plus 1 divided by x. So all I did there was I rewrote f by breaking up the numerator as 2x squared and a plus 1. So we end up with 2x squared divided by x plus 1 over x. So now what we can do is we can rewrite this as, well, 2x squared divided by x is just 2x and 1 over x. We can't simplify that any further. So what we end up with is we can rewrite our original function as 2x plus 1 over x. So what we see here is that as x increases or decreases without bound, this 1 over x is approaching 0. So what that means is that our slant asymptote is given by y equals 2x. And again, remember that just comes from x increasing, which makes this 1 over x small, approach 0. So what we're left with is just y equals 2x for our slant asymptote. So the next thing we want to do is we want to well, plot a couple points on our graph, just to get a better idea as to what our graph's going to look like. So let's choose a couple x values, and let's actually use our vertical asymptote sort of as a guide. So let's think about x equals 0 being down the middle. We know our function's undefined at x equals 0, but let's think about maybe x equals negative 2, x equals negative 1, and x equals negative 0.5. And let's think about something similar on the right side of the y-axis. So maybe x equals 0.5, x equals 1, and x equals 2. So here we'll want to go ahead and calculate the y values or the f of x values at each of these x values. So using a calculator, what I see is that when I substitute negative 2, into f, we get the value negative 4.5. When I substitute negative 1, I get negative 3. When I substitute negative 0.5, I also get negative 3. When I substitute 0.5, I get 3. For 1, I get 3. And 2, I get 4.5. So these right here will give us some of the points on our graph. So before we go ahead and plot these points, let's take into consideration everything else that we have. So we know our domain is all real numbers except for x equals 0. We know we don't have a y-intercept or an x-intercept, so we know we don't cross the x-axis or the y-axis. We don't have a horizontal asymptote. We do have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So let's go ahead and draw a dashed line through x equals 0. So that line right there represents our vertical asymptote. We have a slant asymptote, y equals 2x. So let's plot a couple points here and see what, this graph, or see what the graph of our slant asymptote looks like. So we'll come over 1, up 2, pass through the origin. So we can imagine our slant asymptote just passing through these points. So now what's left? Well, let's go ahead and plot these points. So when x was negative 2, our function value was negative 4.5. So we're coming down negative 2 and negative 4.5 
will actually put us a little bit below where my graph is, but that's okay. If we go to negative 1, our function value is negative 3. So that'll put us somewhere in this range. When x was negative 0.5, our function value is also negative 3. So that means we have the same y-coordinate at both of those two points. Next, when x is 0.5, our function value is 3. So we pass through the point 0.5, 3. We're also passing through the point 1, 3. And finally, the last point is the point 2, 4.5. So that will put us just a little bit above where my graph ends. But like I said, that's okay. All right, so now we have these six points plotted. What is our graph going to look like? So a couple things we want to keep in our minds. Our graph never crosses the x-axis or the y-axis because we don't have any intercepts. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So that means our graph is going to approach this line from either side. And now, just something to mention, our graph's not going to do something like this because we can't cross this x-axis. So on the left side of our graph, we have to do something like this. And just drawing a smooth curve gives us a pretty accurate representation of what the graph's going to look like there. And the same thing on the right side. So again, we can't cross the x-axis. So we can't, for some reason, shoot way down here and then come back up. So what we have to do is we have to connect these three dots with a nice smooth curve also. So there we have the graph of our function f. Thank you.